Let's talk about lookup tables next, okay? I'm gonna combine a couple of these. Lookup tables uh, give us the ability to populate, well, let me take a step back. A few years ago, uh, when MicroStation first came up with item types, if you wanted to tag a road sign, like you saw me do, one of the first things I did was that stop sign, you would have to type in the catalog number, the sign category, the use, the width, the height, and you would have to type in all those fields. I almost guarantee that after doing that a few times, you would be pretty bored with it, number one, because it would take up a lot of time. And would you spell weight limit right every single time? Well, maybe you would, but I guarantee I would reverse the I and the E, or I would reverse the width and the height, and, and I'd make, make mistakes on it. We can, however, now use lookup tables, that is one field, can drive the rest of the record. So if I pick the catalog number, all of this can automatically be populated. I'll, I'll talk about that. And I also want to show you, and here's an example, and I'll go through it in a second. I also want to show you the fact that you can attach more than one item type at the same time. Uh, we'll do that, or I'll show that to you. And then lastly, how all of these can be populated through expressions. Not just things like lookup, but they can do things like, hey, when I, uh, for example, on this cable guardrail that you see right here, when I draw a cable guardrail into this file, or when I, when I do a metal guardrail, that whatever the design length is, and whatever my unit length is, like you see here for the barrier, it's automatically, you know, hey, the, the actual length of it, the construction length is 56 feet, but what's the design length? It's really 50 feet. It's made up of eight foot segments of guardrail and there's seven of them that are required. I don't have to type any of this stuff in. All I need to do is tell it it's eight foot segments and draw the line. MicroStation through its expressions will calculate the rest. They're pretty easy to use. So let me jump into MicroStation and I'll show you a little bit about them. Um, so let's start with uh, talking a little bit about the uh, in let me make sure I'm back on drawing. There we go. Item types. I'm going to show it to you first. Then we're going to go and I'll, I'll, I'll walk through uh, how we attach something. So, for example, you saw the road sign earlier. This is an item type. This is sort of the uh, tags on steroids. It's got a lot of uh, neat features in it. And it has some things like all of these options, or all these fields that you see here, properties, are tied into an item type called road sign. And so we're going to find like the catalog number. The catalog number can be pulled from a pick list. So what this allows me to do is have a drop down for that particular pick list. We also have the sign category. Now the sign category, you're going to notice along with sign use and all of these are going to be grayed out in just a second. Why? Because do you all see this expression value that's right here? Look up, get entry, sign item, and so on. This is going to look up in an Excel spreadsheet a value for what the catalog number is. So if I define the catalog number, it'll automatically define the category, use, width, height, text, color, background, uh, and so on. It won't, it won't do the mounting type because we're going to select that. It, won't do, it will do the sign shape, but it's not going to do the material or the sheeting. Uh, but it will do the panel unit pricing. All of those are a mixture of some are being looked up, others are being defined. So hopefully that makes some sense to you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it. You saw me attach one uh, earlier. Let's just make sure that I don't have anything attached to this cell. I don't. It's just a plain naked cell. So let's attach some data to it. So when I go to uh, attach item, I'm going to go select the road sign. And I'm going to tell it, okay, this is a stop sign. You notice it says one way and it's 36 by 12 and all the info. We're going to come in here and select the type of sign. So, you know, is it a 30 by 30? That's a yield sign. No, that's certainly not it. But it's that one there, R1-1. And you'll notice that all of these are functioning. I can come down and pick that one there, which is a restrictive parking sign. No parking at any time is the text on it. These, these are my catalog numbers. You'll see they define the type. Here is a one-way uh, re rectangular sign and, 
Uh, there, you know, other ones that are in here, state highway markers and all that. So let's go back and let's use that 30 by 30 R1-1. There it is. That's a stop sign. That's exactly what I want. I want to set the mounting type. It needs to be one post. I want it to be uh, 80 millimeters for the thickness or si the material. The, uh, I only have two choices in here, but I'll pick that one. And what do I want the sheeting to be? I want that to be diamond grade reflective. It's going to use the pretty cheap sign, but it's going to use the uh, uh, the lookup for all of these ones you see gra grayed out in here. I'm going to apply it to it, and now all of those properties are attached to this stop sign. You can see there they are. They're all attached exactly the way that I want it. Now, that's expressions, and that's lookup. All of that is being pulled. I want to give you one more example of the expressions. I'm going to jump files, go into this wildcard file that we see here. And I don't care where I draw this, but I'm just going to kind of zoom in here. Let's place a, a line to represent a guardrail. And then we're going to attach an item to type to it to add the data, the non-graphic data that's going to say that it's a, a particular type of guardrail. So I'm just going to jump in here. I'm going to go to place smart line. I'm just going to draw, in this case, like about 260 some odd foot line. Good enough. Poor people that are in this property, they're going to now have a guardrail through the middle of their property. And I'm going to go to my uh, attach tools for my item type. And I'm doing this manually, by the way, folks. I am, you know, drawing the line and then using the uh, attach item. Truth is, if you're really doing this, you would select uh, a tool like in a task for place guardrail and it would do it all at the same time. But uh, I'm doing it manually here just to sort of show you. I'm going to come into my bid items and I'm going to come down to my metal guardrail as an example. What I'm, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the description of the type of metal guardrail. So I'm going to define, again, this is a pick list. So I'm going to say this is half post, spa half, ah, half post spacing. You notice it sets the item number. It sets the unit that it's linear feet. I define the length, the unit length. So let's say this comes in 10 foot segments. I'm going to say 10 foot, uh, probably a little short, but that's okay. You notice that design length, number of segments, construction length are grayed out. That's because they're going to be filled out by the geometry itself. This attach item is going to read the length of this line and populate it for me. Now I could uh, key in, remember this is raw microstation. I could key in things like the alignment, the start, the end, and the side all of the, the, the civil properties that go along with that, because this is microstation. If I was using open roads to do this, I wouldn't have to populate these. It's going to do it automatically for me. Keep in mind, open roads functions with things like item types. So we're not, it's not something totally separate from it. So here, all I'm going to do is attach it and let that attach that to it. And let's go look at that. So I'm going to click on it, and I didn't worry about the, the symbology because I don't care, but if I come into the metal guardrail, you'll notice that the construction, the actual length was 262 feet. It is, the construction length is 270. It's made up of 27 segments at 10 foot, and so it's all, you know, all the correct properties that we might want to track about that element. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.